from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Ansible Fest 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a preview for Red Hat's Ansible Fest 2020, second year that theCUBE's been at the event. Happy to welcome back to the program one of our CUBE alumni, Joe Fitzgerald. He's the Vice President and General Manager of the division that, that includes Ansible. Uh, Joe, thank you, and welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me back, Stu, excited to be here. So, uh, Joe, uh, you, you know, boy, I think since last year, you know, the, 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 the overarching trend of uh, automation adoption has only increased, of course, uh, with, with, with conversations you and I have had uh, back at Red Hat Summit, as well as all the conversations we're having across the industry. Uh, it's been five years now uh, since Red Hat bought Ansible. Uh, remember, you know, big activities uh, at Summit and throughout the industry. A lot has changed. Uh, the, the players that we talked about uh, five years ago definitely have shifted. So why don't, why don't you bring us in as to you know, 2020, uh, you know, the, the, the state of your Ansible business, and uh, let, let's give the, the audience a preview of what we're going to see at the show. Sure, Stu, so it's been an exciting five years. I can't believe how fast it flew. Um, you know, five years ago when Red Hat acquired this little company called Ansible, uh, they were basically, you know, uh, selling to IT admins in a particular space around uh, config management. Um, they, you know, frequently got lumped in with, a, you know, a couple of other companies that were in that segment. Over the past five years, the stats are just amazing. Um, over the past four years, it's been in the top 10 open source projects in the world, right? I think Kubernetes is number seven, Ansible is number nine, and has been in the top 10 for the past five years. The number of contributors, the number of uh, folks with Ansible in their skills, the titles, I mean, the numbers are just amazing. And of course, we've had, you know, analyst validation and thousands of customers vote, uh, you know, with their uh, subscriptions to Ansible. So it's been an amazing five years of growth. Yeah, okay, congratulations. Of course, the, the, the concern always is, you know, oh, when an acquisition happens, what will happen to the culture, what will happen to the community? Uh, Red Hat, you know, everyone knows open source is, is in its DNA there, and, and therefore the, the community has flourished. I definitely see Ansible at many of the, the cloud and cloud native type discussions. Uh, you talked, you mentioned Kubernetes, Joe. Help, help draw the dot, connect the dots uh, for us as to, you know, what should we be expecting to see when it comes to things like, uh, you know, uh, Kubernetes, cloud computing, edge computing, uh, and the like. So it's pretty interesting because, you know, OpenShift has been our flagship offering around Kubernetes at Red Hat, right? And market leader, just incredible validation, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, automation connected up to that environment becomes really, really important because even though people are modernizing their apps and running container-based apps, there's a lot of other things that those things need to be connected up to. Traditional applications, other systems of record, your CMDBs, your change management, things like that. Um, so there's a lot of automation that has to happen around, you know, building, deploying, managing uh, container-based apps in those environments. So sort of a teaser for what's coming up here is you're going to see us pushing Ansible even further into areas like uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift at Ansible Fest. Yeah, Joe, when I, when I look at the, the entire, entire uh, landscape, one of the big challenges out there is there's so many tools out there. You know, developers have all the little pieces that they're dealing with. Uh, if you talk about Kubernetes, it's okay, which cluster am I doing? How do we wrap our arms around uh, managing environments? Uh, I've talked to you about uh, the, the ACM solution. Uh, it, came out of IBM, now, now part of Red Hat. Uh, what I really love, the, the, the top learning I had from Ansible Fest last year is various people in the organization can get their view into really that pipeline of development from the product people uh, through the developer. Uh, you know, we, we always hope that software can be a unifying uh, you know, tool uh, inside an organization, uh, and it definitely felt like Ansible's doing that. So, so do we expect that to, when we talk about Kubernetes, that's the kind of expansion we have is that, you know, not just that I can do more as an individual person, but inside the organization, uh, we can break through some of those silos. Yeah, so I think this placed Ansible's strength. So Ansible, as I mentioned five years ago, was sort of IT admins focused on config. Over the years, we've expanded the number of domains dramatically into network storage, cloud, security. We've also expanded the people who use Ansible automation. So Ansible is extremely popular with developers. It's, it's a you know, favorite in tool chains, right, around automation and config and things like that. 
Um, so bringing together sort of the, the automation that crosses all those domains and the different personas that use Ansible, right? Now bringing that and connecting that up to the, the Kubernetes environment, right, is extremely powerful uh, in, in so many ways and covers a lot of the areas where the automation in those Kubernetes environments sort of ends and you have to have that connection to the other teams and to the other technologies that are outside of that to make the thing work. All right, so what, what specifically should we be expecting to see? You know, what will be the same, what will be the different of the virtual environment versus uh, what everybody's come to expect uh, for, for the in-person Ansible Fest? Well, first of all, the numbers are, are amazing, right? Uh, we've run a number of events over the course of the year, you know, training webinars, uh, you know, all sorts of Ansible events. Every one of them has exceeded our expectations by a lot. Ansible Fest is no different. Um, we're currently over 15,000 people registered for Ansible Fest. Uh, it would not surprise me to see it go you know, much higher than that. Um, our last in-person Ansible uh, event was a couple of thousand people. Uh, the level of interest globally, right, uh, across personas for Ansible Fest is, is just amazing. So we think we're going to see a, a tremendous amount of interest. And in typical Red Hat fashion at Fest, we're going to bring out additional Ansible capabilities around Kubernetes environment, obviously, but talking about where Ansible is going with Edge, right, in a number of areas that people are pushing out on Ansible automation. Um, I believe Ansible is becoming sort of the de facto standard in automation, regardless of what domain, regardless of what persona. And I think Ansible Fest is going to, you know, show again why it is. Awesome. Well, uh, Joe, bold statement. Uh, absolutely phenomenal to see the momentum there. Uh, I'll let you have the, the, the final word as to uh, if, if they haven't already, why should people sign up and uh, uh, any other kind of, you know, cool customers or uh, th things that people should dive into uh, once they have a chance to look at the agenda. Well, if somebody is familiar with Ansible, then they're going to love the expansion of the domains and the capabilities necessary to really expand usage of Ansible. If you're new to Ansible, Ansible, uh, you know, if you look at the number of LinkedIn jobs that talk about Ansible, it's, you know, it's in the in, you know, tens of thousands, right? Indeed, top 10 skill that people are looking for in hiring. So uh, automation is more important than ever, given the sort of the, the world backdrop. Um, so I would encourage people to really look at Ansible Right to expand their professional, you know, skills and things like that. And people that are already in the the know that are using Ansible, wait to see how you can use it for Kubernetes Edge and really expand it beyond where where you are today with it. All right. Well, Joe Fitzgerald, thank you so much. And to our audience, you know, go check out the website. Really easy to find. Uh, re register online. The Cube will have a, a full lineup. Uh, John Furrier is going to be the lead host uh, for for the event in our second year of coverage. Uh, Joe, ha have a great event. And as always, thanks for having the Cube. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. All right, check out thecube.net for all of the upcoming events, as well as uh, you can look at the back catalog. Uh, of course, we've done seven years of Red Hat Summit, as well as uh, the, the Ansible Fest last year. So lots of good customer studies, uh, as, as well as uh, deep dives on all the product. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks, as always, for watching. <laughs>